In the previous two films, I've shown you how to use a purple underpainting for watercolour portraits. The first one we did was this lovely dark skin, and then we did this guy who's sort of Middle Eastern. And naturally, people have said, yeah, yeah, I get the whole purple underpainting thing, but how does it work on a pale Northern European or Caucasian skin? And it totally does work. So that's what I want to show you today. So this is day 11 of the 30 Faces in 30 Days Challenge. And our muse that we've been set today is this woman. I absolutely love her sort of googly eyes and that expression. Fantastic. But I absolutely hate this hat. I guess it's a water polo hat? Not sure. My first tip is when you're painting, you're the artist, you're in charge. And if you don't like something in the picture, Change. We're trying to get a lightness and a character in there. So do leave things out and do work out why you want to paint it. For me, it's all about that expression. So I'm trying to emphasize that. This is an A4 sheet of £140, that's 300 grams, watercolour paper. And I have sketched this freehand, leaving out the hat, leaving out the strap. However, big believer in doing what makes life easy for you. So if you want to trace it, project it, or transfer it in some other way, go for it. So I've got dioxys in purple here. I'm going to do an underdrawing in the purple, or an underpainting in the purple, so that when we then put yellows and oranges and the other colours on top, that purple will be neutralised but it will give structure to our portrait. With a pale skin, it is important not to go too dark. You've got to have the stru structure there, but not obviously go too over the so top. So what I'm doing is putting some of that colour down and then using water to smooth it away so I don't get any harsh edges and I can just develop this underpainting. That'll probably be about the darkest I have to go. It's better probably to undercook it than overcook it at this point. So I'm looking for shadow, shapes, tone, looking if there are opportunities to join edges together so that I get big shapes rather than worrying about little shapes. I can see that the white of this eye is in very pale shadow over here, whereas that is more exposed. I will leave that highlight so that uh, we can come back to that. I'm also using a size 10 brush. It actually hasn't got a very good point on So that I don't get too caught up in detail. But I have to hand a finer, that's a size 6 brush, into the second eyebrow, which is a really odd shape. So it's just important to paint what you see, not what you know. This light isn't particularly direct or harsh. I mean, there is a highlight on the top of the nose that we want to save. There's a highlight on the nose here that we want to save. Highlight on that nostril or above the nostril. We're looking for shapes and I'm questioning my drawing as well as I go along. I wonder if I've got this nose a little bit fat. So just because I've drawn it, I don't have to take it as a uh, gospel truth and if I see something as as I work along I can try and amend it as I go or stop and check coming around the chin area I'm just following those shapes round and then we come up into the cheek now I'm going to stop the portrait here because obviously she's got that sort of strap under her chin and it's quite hard to see the shape of her jaw so I'm going to have to fade that off 
shadows for her wrinkles are important because we can see she's raising her eyebrows, she's rolling her eyes and that results in those shadows across her forehead. All right, let's come back over to this side. The eyelid is very light, really catching the light. That eyelid across there, sorry, not eyelid, the, it's where the eyelashes would be. I'm not going to put in every lash. Need to make decisions about whether I'll do that, how much I'll do a bit later on. She is quite big on the paper, so I may have to add in more detail than is my natural inclination. C, and then we've got that iris there that comes right into the corner. The bottom is just cut off by the lower lid, and it's worth looking if you're doing this freehand, just remember that. We've got perspective on features, so this one will be bigger than this one because it's closer to us. We think about perspective on building. I don't really think about it in features, but they definitely do get bigger. So this half of her top lip is quite shaded. It's got more shadow on this far side. The bottom lip is catching the light here, less so this side, the lines. Though this is shadowed, there is a little bit of reflected light. Often you will get that under the chin. So I'm just going to use my damp brush just to pull off a little reflected light there. Finer brush. Look at that line between the lips. And that lip line, I cannot emphasise how important that is. That shadow between the lips is often very dark on the face and totally gives an expression. I'll put a bit of that pupil in so she doesn't look like a zombie as well. Just a little bit more definition around that. I think maybe I just need to darken down here slightly. This layer has dried. And if we want to, we could erase a few more pencil marks at this point. If there's anything that you would be upset showing through your final painting, now is a good time to get rid of them. The next layer I'm going to work on is a sort of yellowy orangey layer because yellow is the complementary colour of purple and it will neutralise it down into a sort of brown and things will start to look a lot less spooky and I'll have some pinks so yellows oranges pinks ready to put into that layer and then we'll go to darks for definition given the orange of her cap which I hate I might just sort of reflect it in this portrait by bringing out a little more orange than I might otherwise I'm in the process of cleaning up palettes here yet again so I've got some Quin Gold lurking in that palette, which I think would be good to use. I've got some Quin Sienna or Burnt Sienna lurking in that palette. And this palette, look, I've got some more Quin Gold. That's, so I'm just adding water to getting it ready to go because, again, I'm avoiding those hard lines. And if you have to stop to remix colours in the middle of a wash, that's when you're likely to get nasty hard lines in places you don't want them. And while I'm on that palette, look, there's a nice pink that would be Quin Magenta. And I reckon that could be really handy. I've got some cadmium red there if I want a warmer red. What I'm missing is a sort of maroony colour. Oh, tell you what colour might be rather nice. Let's get rid of that splodge is this, which is brown madder. When you're working in these layers, as I say, have your paints ready to go so that you don't have to stop and think in the middle. Now, I can see lots of yellow here, masses down here, not so much in the middle. I am going to start being incredibly brave with some yellow. just want it to be brave. I don't want this to be a mimsy-whimsy portrait because she's 
got a brave face on her. I imagine this is her first water polo match she's ever taken part in and she's rolling her eyes and saying what possessed me to do this or maybe it's you know Sunday morning really early and she's got a bit of a hangover who knows um, but that's the story I'm sort of telling myself that she's she's sort of looking at the viewer going really why am I doing this and can you see how that just starts to neutralize down that purple even see a little yellow in the whites of our eyes I wish I'd gone a bit darker there grab a bit of purple as soon as you start to get other colors going on you know you do look and think oh I wish I'd put more of that at this or that or or whatever and of course you can so I'm trying to keep edges wet so they do not get too hard and I'm just again following the contours of the face and the patterns of the face again trying not to think oh I'm painting a cheek or I'm painting a person that I'm just following the lights and the darks and the tonal values and I find that makes a far more accurate painting. I'm not covering up all the purple. I am not covering up all the white space. I'm looking lights and darks and just trying to make a real assessment of what is going on. Let's grab some orange before we get too yellow and get some warmth in there as well. So this is Quinn Sienna. Say so I'm going to put in more orange than I might under other circumstances, just to reflect that hat. I'm going to take some of that down. into the hair. Trying not to finish one area too much. Because you're trying to always achieve a balance as you paint and if you say work just on that eye and got the most perfect eye that might totally out of balance with what you want to do elsewhere. So keeping that picture all to roughly the same level of development is probably a good thing to do and that's because I'm using slightly stronger pigments it's really easy to see how that yellow just produces a beautiful brown over the purple which is perfect for her eyes. I've got to decide what to do with this background so I am going to bring some of the colour into the background and then I'll have to sharpen up the edges of it but I don't want her to be too cut out. I think we can start to add little bits of pink so this you often find a lot of pink and red in the nose that's simply because of the blood supply that we've got going on there so this is the Quinn Magenta I'm using at the moment loads of pink on her chin loads of pink here this paper's still wet my studio is so ridiculously cold today but um, it's going to take forever to dry a bit more yellow coming through on the edges of these shadows I need to using a thirsty brush to just to pull out some shape and loads of pink in that crease above the eyelid, putting a bit of that brown madder there, red in the eyebrow area there, and then coming down to some of that shadow. We'll go for a slightly smaller brush here, just get some red and pink. And we really want this to be a ball. 
so let's really try and make it pop and stand out I'm just going to come down just pull some of that into there right what are we going to do on these lips let's put use a bit of that brown madder quite nice deepen and warm that shadow a lot of warmth up there and that eyelid coming down to there. now let's have a look so you've got these sort of highlight there and more of a I like there. Now, can we see any warmer red in here? So I've got a bit of that cadmium. Again, I think I can see in her eyeball some warmer red there. And I'm not putting a lot on anywhere. The lips are definitely not red, they are really purple, purpley pink. Might be a bit too pink, she wouldn't be wearing lipstick while she's off to her water polo match, would she? We'll be okay. Mustn't forget her neck. Take some of that maybe into some of the hair. I think I've gone as far as I can with this at the moment. Need to let it dry and we'll take it from there. With this layer dry, we're now going to add some blues and darks and just adjust things. So I've got a little bit of Prussian blue here, a little bit of cobalt blue. I've mixed the Prussian blue in with that brown madder and it's made a really nice dark. So I'd urge you to always try and mix your darks from colours that you've used elsewhere in the painting because that will really make, make sure that they integrate with the rest of your picture rather than standing out like a sore thumb. Sort of edge of the iris, just note how it goes under that bottom lid so you can't see that dark all the way round. We've also got some blue in the white of her eye. Again, I'm not going to go mad on these. Oops, well, maybe I am going to go mad on these eyelashes. And they're there, and because it is a relatively big picture they need to go in but they don't need to go in super dark she certainly hasn't got her waterproof mascara on just kind of water those out lift it a bit she does need a bit of eyebrow and again it's a shape not every hair and I can definitely see a bit of blue here and a little bit of blue there I'm not going to bother with the lower lashes because you can hardly see them just want to shape that round this last layer can be quite a tricksy one because if you are rather happy with how things are looking and get a bit nervous and not want to muck it up at this last point to get some of that dark in there blend it because now i'm looking at it the center of this lip actually is all bit warmer than I thought it was so I think I can get away putting a little cadmium red in there balance that up here just mellow down that as a highlight in this case only a tiny bit of dark in that nostril because we really can't see a lot of it I don't want to emphasize these too much so the first wrinkle isn't that strong the second one 
is more so. Right, using my dark, let's look at this eyebrow. So it starts the nice shape here. Oops. Comes round. I got that wrong. Try that again. Comes round. Of course, it extends to here. Extends to there. It's not very defined. It's definitely some blue going on here or bluey green again with her eyeball the bluey shadow there I've got the highlight there's definitely some blue across there I have to just be careful before I put that pupil in this one is closer to us and we don't want it to go too fuzzy. This outline dark ring that fuzzes in, that's no bad thing. See a funny mark in the highlight. I don't know what it is. I guess lashes over here, so I guess I should put this vaguest smidge of eyelashes just in a couple of places. Let's look at the direction. Probably no more than that. Oh, my poor eyebrow's gone a bit funny. With watercolour, you've always got to be looking back to where you've painted and just make sure it's behaving itself because. It can be quite naughty when it wishes to be. This is some of that cobalt blue. And I think that will be better. Okay, let's see what's happened to this poor girl's eyebrow. We've got dark of the hair here. The hair sort of defines the chin. Right, let's just darken that iris. It's not not iris, sorry, uh, pupil. So that's fully dry and the final two things I've got to do is just lift that little area to get the shape of her cheek back and her poor old splodgy eyebrow. I'm not going to worry about the splodge underneath it. Just needs a bit of a sort out. Yep, I think we are done as much as we can be done. So all that remains is the nice bit of taking off the tape carefully. Because you do not want to rip. And considering whether we've achieved what I wanted to achieve, which was to capture those really prominent googly eyes and that slightly eye rolling expression. And yeah, I think we have. I'm not sure that leaving this all unresolved up here has done me that many favours, but given how much I dislike that orange hat, we'll just have to live with it.